everyone, it's Chrissy here again with some mid-deployment tips and tricks. I recommend watching this along with the emotional cycles of deployment video on cycle four, recovery and stabilization. Um, so combine those two together to get a good pre-deployment support video and brief. Now, if you are in the middle of mid-deployment or you have recently begun your deployment, whether at home or aboard ship, and you don't feel like you are in recovery and stabilization, stage four, you are still in emotional disorganization, I want to assure you that that is okay and, and that that would not necessarily be um, unusual to still feel emotionally um, unstable. If you feel like it's been a long period of time and you are tired and you feel like you would like to gain additional help, um, please know that you have additional services available to you aboard ship. You have your DRCs, your Deployed Resiliency Counselors, your chaplains, and then some other appointed contact, um, someone that could either be your suicide prevention coordinator or your um, resiliency team coordinator or someone like that. Um, back at home, we have our Families Overcoming Under Stress, uh, which offers resiliency training. Fleet and Family Support Center has our um, counselors that are doing telework services. Um, we also have additional support services through like the Armed Forces YMCA and um, Military One Source. That's the other one that I'm forgetting. All right, so I'm gonna go through this brief. Um, this is navigating your new normal um, during mid-deployment, so after the deployment has taken place. Um, so we're gonna talk about deployment experiences, um, your emotional reactions, and then some self-care strategies, which is pretty important. Now, all of these briefs that are in the on-demand um, format have been created to in response to the COVID-19 global pandemic. So realize that we are tailoring these briefs specifically to deal with, um, with that current situation, which is additional stress. I have a lot of respect for every service member and every family member who is having to experience deployment and additionally um, dealing with the global pandemic. So I'm personally thinking about my other parents out there who are staying at home. I'm staying at home as a parent um, and it's difficult to juggle work and homeschooling and a loss of support structure. I have lost the support of um, our schools, our tutors, our outside activities, um, friends. So pat yourself on the back, realize that this is a very um, unusual situation and um, please feel free to reach out if you feel overwhelmed um, or feel like you're having trouble. Um, all right, so we talked about recovery and stabilization. I would check that other brief to kind of get some ideas on what that looks like for a service member and what it looks like for a family member. One of the other things that I want to draw attention to is that we normally discuss this brief with family members and generally we kind of look at it from the aspect of, oh, the spouse and family members are going to have a lot to get used to and the service member, he'll just be so, he or she will be so busy, um, don't worry about them. Um, I actually have talked to spouses before that have come to me and said, my service member um, on deployment is having a very hard time adjusting and I'm actually having a little bit of a hard time adjusting, but they're having a much more difficult time. How can I help them? And that's a good question. Um, so for you, it's good to hear, remember those resources I talked about, DRCs, chaplains, um, recommending that they get a normal routine, um, that they have a support structure, that they set goals, that they have something to look forward to. Um, those are all things that, that we need to kind of reinforce when we're having those conversations with them as well. So remember that for yourself, also for the service member, for your family members back at home. So it applies to everyone. There's not one way that people go through deployment and there's not one way that people go through the emotional cycles. It is, uh, can be any different flavor in between. So adjusting to your new normal. Service members will adjust to their roles and their responsibilities. Um, the parents back at home or the spouses or um, 
family members or significant others back at home will have to adjust to the new normal. And that might mean additional responsibilities that they didn't have before. Um, those of us at home that are dealing with COVID-19, we will, I've noticed that there are two camps. There are the camps that are feel uh, bored, who feel uh, confined, who feel a little isolated. And then there's another camp that has a lot of activity going on in the house and um, maybe feels like they don't have enough time to themselves. So realizing where you are in that situation is good and providing yourself either with the breaks that you need periodically throughout the day or regularly reaching out for social interaction um, in safe and healthy ways like video or telephone or sending letters or notes or gifts, um, whatever works for you. And don't wait until you feel way down. Do that regularly, just like eating right, sleeping, um, exercising. It's like a steady drop fills the bucket. It's not, I have an empty class and now I need to go and fill it back up. You manage that in a gradual sense. I feel a little low today. I'm going to do something and bring myself back up. Today, uh, my kids were driving me nuts. Um, the next day, I woke up early and got some tasks accomplished before they were out of bed. Those kind of things are how we really build resiliency rather than waiting till we're at the bottom and we can't um, then recover easier. Um, we will develop new skills and accomplishments. I remind service members and family members, deployment actually does make stronger family units. If it's done correctly, if um, people are willing to reach out, if they're willing to admit their mistakes, when they make mistakes, um, and if the uh, lines of communication are safe and healthy and regular, I think that this does have the potential to make relationships stronger. Um, so if you feel like that's not the case for you, um, reach out for some of our other additional support services, but that new responsibilities and accomplishments, think of this as a way for you to grow in your relationships and remind yourself of that when things get difficult. Um, your friends and support systems, you'll need to rely more on them. Um, I like to also remind service members at this time that your family members, your significant others, your spouses back at home will need additional support structure because they are losing some of that support structure when service member does go away. It's the same with children. So having someone step in is just providing additional support for those family members and, um, and spouses. So it can be difficult to become jealous of some of those new relationships that are formed. But again, trust and respect are a part of all relationships. And as long as there is mutual trust and, and respect and we understand boundaries, um, that is how we make sure all of those relationships are very healthy. Um, we'll develop new interests and hobbies and that's a great thing. And then look for um, and celebrate all of the positive outcomes that come out of this, okay? Um, again, regular communication is really important for, um, for those continued relationships. I'm going to talk a little bit later about um, so creating a healthy support structure, social support structure, um, in, in a later part of this brief, so look back for that. Now, if you are on deployment and you have access to video, face, some kind of a tele-face interaction, I don't know, FaceTime or uh, um, video conferencing or something like that, that's great. If um, email, snail mail, and calling, if you have access to all of these, that is really fantastic. Um, but most of the time, that will not be the case on deployment. And um, family members back at home, um, realize what works for you, but also be open to trying new modes of communication, both for you and for the service member, because it does um, deepen the connection when we can have other ways that we are communicating. Um, so we can share our daily happenings, um, kind of generally let them know what's going on. Um, but we also need to think of other unexpected ways that we can reach out to our family members. Um, I was actually better about phone calls um, earlier in my relationship with my significant other and then later it became all about the emails and I think that that was mostly because then I had the time to fully engage with what was going on and that was when my life got just got busier with children and work and other responsibilities. Um, so have that conversation if you haven't already. 
um, with your significant other or with your family member, just saying, this is generally what my day looks like and I want to have regular communication with you, but maybe this mode isn't working for me at the time or I, I, I love to talk to you on the phone, but I need to do it after five o'clock because I have too many things going on at work or maybe after the children are asleep is a better time for the phone calls because they seem to have arguments, which was happened to me. My children would fight when, um, when a service member would call home. So be open to that um, and realize that you don't wanna to get to a point where the communication becomes very stale. So I'll see you for um, the second part of a pre-deployment brief. Bye.